If you've been to a running shoe store in the last 10 years, then there's a good chance that you've been told about the dangers of pronation. And maybe they helped you choose a shoe that helps you avoid the motion of pronation. In this video, we're gonna talk about what exactly pronation is and if pronation is actually a bad thing. Okay, so let's start off. What is pronation? Pronation is a natural movement of the foot that occurs when the foot hits the ground while running or walking. It is composed of three different subcomponents, subtalar eversion, ankle dorsiflexion, and forefoot abduction. Quite often, recreational runners are educated about the dangers of pronation and told that they should avoid pronation at all costs when running and choose shoes and do corrective exercises that prevent this pronation motion from occurring. But if pronation is dangerous and it's making your running less efficient, then why are some of the best runners in the world pronating excessively when they run? Let's explore what the research says and whether or not pronation is actually a bad thing. By the end of this video, you should understand the truth about pronation and functional running mechanics and know a few drills to help your foot move better and help you absorb more force and run more efficiently. Okay, so to understand pronation, we need to understand the arch spring mechanism of the foot. You can think of the arch of your foot like a rubber band. And as we go through mid stance of running, that rubber band is going to store and then release energy. If your foot arch is working well, then we should be using that stored energy from mid stance to propel ourselves forward at toe off. The arch spring mechanism is what allows some of the most elite runners in the world to store a lot of energy during mid stance and use it very efficiently as they toe off in the gait cycle. But what does the research say about pronation? Well, this study, for example, showed that this arch spring mechanism that we're talking about can increase running efficiency by about 17%. So now you might be wondering if the arch spring mechanism is a natural movement and it can increase the efficiency of our running, then why do people often associate it with pain or injury? Well, one reason for that is that it's actually difficult to figure out what true pronation is. Let's take a look at two different cases where pronation often gets blamed for causing pain. Case number one is whenever someone has a very flat foot. This, for example, can often put a little bit more stress on something like the posterior tibialis tendon. Often, runners who present with a flat foot actually lack internal rotation somewhere else. Maybe they lack internal rotation at the hip, maybe they lack internal rotation at the tibia, or maybe they actually lack pronation, which is essentially internal rotation at the midfoot. In that case, they might compensate by having a flat foot, but the solution is not to limit pronation or to stop mobility at the foot. In fact, the solution is actually to gain mobility elsewhere. Remember, pronation is the ability of the arch to collapse and to lift. So in the case of someone who has a flat foot, we probably need to increase their ability to pronate by being able to lift the arch better. And one way that we can do that is by mobilizing the midfoot specifically. The way we're gonna do this is with an exercise, it's called lower extremity torsion. This is where we take and we rotate out the knee laterally to move all of these midfoot joints up and down. So the way we're gonna do that is by standing up anchoring the foot down and then rotating the knee out to the side. If we do this well with a slight degree of knee bend, we can see that that arch is gonna to start to lift and then collapse down, lift and then collapse down. So even for this flat-footed person, the goal isn't to reduce pronation, the goal is to increase the arch of the foot's mobility and give that person some movement options at the midfoot. So if you're already lacking movement options at the foot, the last thing you wanna do is go to a running store and find a shoe that gives you even less movement options. What you wanna do is increase your movement options and your mobility that's available to you at the foot through midfoot mobility, and then also up the chain through tibial rotation and through hip internal rotation. These are gonna give you some movement options to spread out and dissipate forces when you're running, and that often can go a lot farther towards helping you run pain-free than a shoe that tries to prevent motion. All right, let's look at another case, and that is someone with very high arches. In this case, often this person has an inability to pronate and inability to collapse the arch, and they actually need to work on collapsing the arch more. One way to test if this is the case for you is to do a knee to the wall test. This is an ankle dorsiflexion test, which is part of the combined motion of pronation. 
when you're doing this knee to the wall test, you should see the arch of the foot rise and fall and specifically collapse as you bring your knee forward towards the wall. If your foot arch is mobile and can accept forces and yield, then you'll see that arch naturally collapse as you push the knee forward, just as if you were going into mid stance during running. But for a lot of patients with a rigid, high, stiff arch, they think they need more arch support and to continue to prevent that motion and work around it. But these patients and clients often really need to be able to yield more into that midfoot and accept forces more. Research shows us that a stiff, rigid, high arch is at a mechanical disadvantage compared to a mobile arch. But luckily, this is an adaptation that we can gain from mobility training, so long as pronation isn't trying to be restricted by a shoe. Runners are absorbing a lot of force with each stride they take. The more options you have to absorb these forces at different areas of the body, especially the foot, gives you more options to run with more volume without acquiring stress in a specific area. This is why improving movement options at the foot and at the hip and at the knee can often reduce the overuse injuries that a lot of runners are experiencing. These overuse injuries could include shin splints, plantar fasciitis, or even patellar tendinopathy. While you could chase each of those individual areas, it's often more effective to improve the way that we yield and absorb force during running, and that will result in more long-term beneficial changes. So how do we actually do this? How do we learn to collapse the arch and yield and absorb force in that area? Well, one drill that we can use is the wedge drill. This is where we put two wedges, or if you don't have wedges, two small plates, one underneath the big toe, and then one underneath the lateral heel. The goal here with this exercise is to evert the lateral heel or to turn it inward, which is a natural motion of pronation. We're encouraging with that wedge. And the other part of the foot that we're manipulating is the big toe. We're lifting that up to help all the weight that we're putting into the ground go specifically into the arch and getting it to yield and lengthen. Remember, there are a lot of muscles and ligaments and joint tightness in that midfoot that we need to mobilize. So we're gonna need to put some weight into the arch of the foot and work on collapsing that down. This wedge position is just gonna encourage when you're adding weight to your foot that that weight is actually distributed towards collapsing the arch and gaining mobility in that area. I like to work on this drill for about one to two minutes and then go back to that dorsiflexion wall test and see if you can see some improvement in the way that your foot is moving down towards the ground. Another good way to reinforce this once we've started to add some mobility to that arch is by doing a single leg hop. By hopping up and down, we can again start to see that stress going to that arch and starting to learn how to yield and absorb forces. We don't naturally get the same force absorption pattern from just running, so adding single leg hopping and adding these wedge drills and encouraging your foot to go into these positions that it's not used to going into can clean up a lot of stiffness and movement restrictions that you might have accumulated over time. In summary, pronation is an important movement that not only allows us to avoid some common overuse injuries, but actually makes running more efficient as well. While there are some cases where someone has overused a pronation position and needs to gain access to getting out of that pronated position, the goal really is never to stop motion, but rather to encourage and gain mobility. So if you're having trouble collapsing the arch, we need to learn how to do that. If you're having trouble lifting the arch, we need to learn how to do that. Give these drills a try, and if you do want to get a more specific gait analysis on your individual lower extremity and your individual running technique, you can talk to our gait analysis specialist, Carmen. I'll put his information in the description below. I'll also put a link in the description below to the different research articles that he and I looked at to put the information together for this video. Overall, I hope this helps you gain mobility options through your foot and through your lower extremity and run better, more efficiently, and pain-free. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.